A U.S. Army veteran is reflecting on his service in Afghanistan in a new book that's published one year after American troops completed their withdrawal from that country. The book is called Operation Pineapple Express, the incredible story of a group of Americans who undertook one last mission and honored a promise in Afghanistan. Simon & Schuster published the book earlier this week. Like CBS News, the company is a division of Paramount Global. Joining us now is the book's author, retired Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mann. He served in the U.S. Army from 1991 to 2013. He served in Afghanistan from 2004 to 2006, and then again from 2010 to 2011. Scott, first, what is Operation Pineapple Express? Hey, Catherine. Thanks for having me on. Um, it was a, a call sign, a code name that really uh, evolved during the chaos of the fall of Kabul. Uh, it started with uh, trying to evacuate one Afghan commando who was a friend of mine named Nizam that I'd met back in 2010. And he went to our Green Beret qualification course. He fought alongside Green Berets, was even shot through the face defending uh, U.S. Army Special Forces. And so when he contacted me in, in 2021 that the country was falling and that his visa had languished and he wasn't going to get out and the Taliban were texting him, uh, we put together a small team of veterans that uh, worked together using cell phones and relationships to try to be his guide out of the country. And, and out of that came the call sign uh, Task Force Pineapple or Operation Pineapple Express based on the code word that he had to give the Marines to get through the, the hole in the fence. According to the book, Task Force Pineapple rescued around 500 Afghans from Kabul. Talk about what your team accomplished and all of the people involved. Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, there were a range of volunteer groups doing the same kind of work, Catherine. And in that book, I really believe that's why I wrote it in the third person. It's representative of not just Pineapple, but all of the volunteer groups uh, who, who, who did this kind of work. But, but really what it came down to for us was once we got Nizam out, um, a, a former Green Beret turned Syracuse school teacher whose her uh, hero was Harriet Tubman, worked with members of the 82nd Airborne to create basically an underground railroad uh, that we called the Pineapple Express. And it combined an open sewage canal that paralleled the crowd and the fence that the Taliban were not willing to go into and then from there, a four-foot hole in the fence guarded by the members of the 82nd who would pull those refugees out and then move them across the airfield to safety. And that's how we were able to, to scale up and move a lot more Afghans uh, to freedom during the worst period of the uh, collapse. Wait a second. I want to go back to that one detail. You used what amounted to sort of a, a sewage drain that people would, the Afghans would be crawling through to that hole in the sense to, to get them to safety? Right. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the whole idea was that the Taliban were, were forming an outer perimeter around the airfield and they had checkpoints everywhere. But what we learned pretty early on was that they would not get down in that sewage canal. And so uh, the Afghan allies that we were helping to guide, they would drop down in there with their families and then they would move to a certain hole in the fence where uh, members of the 82nd Airborne had a green chem light. They would flash a signal of the pineapple on their phone, and uh, we would have already sent the information over to the 82nd, and they would, uh, they would pull them through that hole in the, in the fence and then put them on, on airplanes. And that's really what the book's about, is all of those amazing Afghans and volunteers that made that happen in the dead of night. It's about making things happen. Okay, so you're a retired Green Beret. You've been deployed globally. What was it about the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan a year ago that may have broken you mentally or emotionally? I think it started with watching the Taliban strutting around in Kabul, wearing our gear, carrying our weapons, driving our vehicles and the vehicles of our partners and their gear. And, and the phone calls from Gold Star families, you know, asking you know, what it was all for. The, uh, the anguished calls of, of my friends that I'd served with who just were watching this whole thing fall apart that we had fought and bled for, you know, a network, a, a partnership that had stood against the, the Taliban and Al Qaeda for 20 years that we had put in place because of 9-11. And we were just turning it away. We were just letting it go. And Green Berets and special operators were taught, you don't leave partners on the battlefield, no matter what the situation, that's a, that's a moral injury. And so that's why we formed Pineapple. That's why a lot of these other groups formed, I believe, was because we wanted to at least try and do something even if our government didn't. And it gave us a way 
to, to try to make a small difference in a, in a really, really terrible time. Last month, the CIA tracked down and killed the leader of al-Qaeda in the Afghan capital, Kabul. Are we back to where we started before 9-11, with Afghanistan having the potential to be or become a safe haven for terrorist groups like al-Qaeda? We still have really good contacts inside the country, uh, Afghan commandos, special forces. Uh, there's actually uh, an Afghan-American former army sergeant who's in the country right now. And all of them are saying the same thing. Al-Qaeda has completely reconstituted. Zawahiri has been replaced. Foreign fighters from North Africa and Southeast Asia are openly training on the very Afghan National Army bases, Catherine, that we trained on in Kandahar and Helmand. So yes, I'd say not only are we back where we were, you now have ISIS in the mix. The Iranians are cooperating to some degree with Al-Qaeda. I think we're looking at a level of, of possible global terror projection that we haven't seen in decades and no one's talking about it. And no one's talking about the fact that these Afghan commandos and special forces are the very antibody that we need and we left them on the battlefield. Final question, Scott. What do you want people to know about the impact on you, um, not only as a soldier, but just as a human, you know, in, in the heart, what you saw? I think the, 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 certainly there's, there's, there's people hurting a whole lot worse than me. And what I would just tell people, particularly around 9-11 and Veterans Day, is let's check in on our veterans. Let's check in on our military families, our Gold Star families. Catherine, you know this with your own uh, family and, and the way that you've covered the war and stood up for our community. They're hurting right now. 73% of veterans feel betrayed. 67% feel humiliated. There's been an 81% spike in the veteran hotline on, at the VA website. Um, this, is, this has been a massive moral injury. And I think we need Americans to, to take stock of that, to check in on our veterans. I hope that people will read this book and just understand the stories of what these veterans did to honor a promise and, and put this moral responsibility on their own shoulders. It, it, it was the best in America stepping up. Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mann, thank you for your candor, your authenticity, and your service. Thank you, Catherine.